All right, today's uh, exercise is going to be about assemblies and more particularly more complex assemblies that actually starts to incorporate hardware, right? So, so far we've developed these objects that are sort of floating. Um, for instance, the rotating louvers that we developed, right? They sort of just float out in space somewhere in front of the glass and we haven't actually attached it with anything yet. So we're moving down a level of detail here to developing the hardware that holds some of the equipment onto our um, structure, basically. So we're going to develop armatures. And you can't really see it very well on screen, I know. Sorry, guys. Let me select something so that you can see it a little better. There you go. So we're developing these armatures and, as well as the, the actual um, structure itself, right? So I'm going to show you an image of a curtain wall system with a glass fin for support and rigidity. And that glass fin usually has some kind of what people refer to as spider clips, which are the hardware that reach out from the glass, um, the glass fin itself, and then uh, reaches to the, the curtain wall glazing in front. And so it looks a little bit something like this. Um, let me go. Glass fin curtain wall. This is it, essentially. So it's, it's got a vertical glass fin with some kind of hardware armature that reaches out from it and grabs the glass that forms the facade, right? So imagine trying to develop and model that level of detail for a curved or even more difficult, a warped surface um, for, you know, something that's, say, a mid-rise building. I mean, you could say that this is going to be applicable all the way up to a... a a high rise, but even a two, three, or four story warped surface facade is going to be hours and hours and hours of modeling something like this in order to get it to work. So what we're going to do is use the box morph tool. And the box morph tool is basically going to establish a domain or a set of domains on a surface, which is like saying an area on a surface, that it's going to take a geometry and replicate it and morph it so that it applies to each of those individual boxes. It's really kind of difficult to explain, but imagine if you took a little boundary box around this hardware and you said, I want to do one of these in every single one of these places. So I'm going to put a box here, box here, box there, box there, box there, box, box there, and I'm going to model just one piece. And then I'm going to say, all right, now take this one piece and morph it into every single one of those boxes. So if you've got hundreds or thousands of hardware uh, pieces, items, elements, whatever, um, you can do it instantaneously using Box Morph. It's very, very powerful. So back to the Rhino definition, um, or the Rhino model that I have here. I'm sort of simulating it with you, and I'm going to give you this model in just a moment, um, the parts that you need anyway. And then what we're eventually going to get to, which you'll see is so incredibly, remarkably, unbelievably easy, is warped surfaces. All instantaneously mapped across the entirety of the facade. Not to mention we can change the subdivisions and the spacing and the domain where things are located like that. Imagine trying to remodel that if Iggy says, no, no, I want three subdivisions instead of two. Even a simple change like that will take you hours, endless hours. Any questions so far for the intro? Okay, let me distribute this model and then collect all of your assignments from over the weekend, and then we'll get going on this.